Hello there, Jose Rodriguez back again. I'm going to talk about the effect that some sprays could have on your prints. It has been reported that some sprays apply a sort of a yellowish tint to your finished print, especially visible on your black and whites. What does this yellow tint do? That's what actually protects against UV. Okay, so that is a very common problem with some of these sprays, although some of them just show zero effect. But you might see that. And if you do so, how do you compensate for that? So say, for instance, you are printing on some good quality fine art paper. It is matte or glossy, and you want to enhance the life expectancy of this gorgeous print you just made by applying some sort of protectant spray to it. And again, this is going to be the subject of a project down the road a little bit. I'm still waiting for all of the sources that I went ahead and ordered from. And we'll talk about that a bit later. But right now, this is going to discuss the possible effects that some of these sprays may have on the surface of your print. Now, it may add more gloss. Okay. It may leave the paper surface untouched. So there is no difference between the unsprayed and the sprayed. Some of them add a little bit more density. Some of them add uh, more pop to your colors and so on. So they will have some sort of physical effect. Some of them have zero effect as has been reported by some of my viewers and people that are more experienced using these types of sprays. So how do you compensate for that? Well, if you create your own profiles, for instance, with the Color Monkey photo from x right you can compensate for that. What you need to do is this. When you print out your original chart, and this is chart one, and this is chart two, which is generated, custom made to the results after scanning this one. So this is your primary chart. When it dries, spray it as you normally would spray with your particular brand or choice of spray. Let that dry. Go eat something. Go out. Come back later and scan that. Now you will then generate a second chart which will be based on the results of this one. If this has a little bit of a yellowish tint to it now, the scanner will be able to detect that and will generate a secondary chart that will include corrections for that slight yellowish tint. Again, you will let this dry, you will spray it, let that fully dry again, go out, come back later, and scan the last chart. One, two, three, four, five. Now, a profile will be generated that should take into effect that slight warming or yellowish tint that some of these sprayers will impart. And so at that point, you have a custom profile for that particular paper and that particular spray. You are not going to use that profile on that same paper unless you spray, unless you commit to spray. So you could create two profiles, one for prints that will be sprayed and one for prints that will not be sprayed. Either one should look identical after spraying and in comparison to the one that you did not spray, as long as you use the correct profile for both. So that is it. You could compensate for that. Yes, indeed. It will also compensate for some of the density changes that you may experience. So that is a good hint for those of you who are able to create profiles at home. Regardless of what profiler you use, you should be able to compensate for the effects of a specific prey on your prints. All right, that is it. Thank you so much. The next video will be about what possibly can trigger a B200 deadly printhead error on your Canon Pro printer. I wouldn't wish that on my enemies. Okay, I've experienced it. And it required me to get a brand new printhead. And so I will tell you what to do, what not to do. And if you do, have a need for a genuine Canon Pro Printer printhead, I'll give you a source as well.
Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.